always be B, C closing. Always be closing. Always be closing. What's your name? Fuck you. That's my name. <laughs>
I'm, I'm very excited to have it all came together. We got a little nice. Johnny Phantasm Riot Press advertisement there. Um, but I mean, it looks, I mean, it looks great, nice and shiny. Um, it does nice look paper. Nice. Yeah, it looks, it, it looks very. I'm very happy with it. You know, and there's, there's the inside uh, credits, uh, edited by George and Whitney. Oh man, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> I know, but I, I figured you, you you helped out quite a bit with it, so you deserve some credit. Um, George, if there's a single mistake in there, if there is one. And then, <laughs> and, then we got, and then we got these in there as well. I'm excited about these. Those um, came out now, sharp. Now, now, during the campaign, you know, I was advertising these were the covers, but, uh, uh, you know, kind of a, a little surprise was I actually put some images on there. But th this is the format that I'm going to be doing with all the Ultra Star books. Is um, you know I'm gonna have little little books for each character, and I'm gonna have symbols that go along with each of them on the back. So I kind of like this little theme thing I, I got going on. And it, w what's funny about like putting together books like this? I mean, and, and the same thing's happening with with Extreme ninety three right now. Some of it, I mean, like spoiler is like I kind of make it up as as I go, and I think a lot of creators kind of do that. Like um, there's a Stargate in in um, Extreme ninety three. And up until at about an hour ago, it was just an iron-looking uh, Stargate. But I made it gold because it makes sense for it to be gold because it's Johnny's – it's a Stargate that he constructs. So it's it's weird how, how some things just fall into place. So it's like with those characters on the cover and the symbols on the back, that's something that just kind of fell into place. Uh, and then here we got the uh, the um, PTP Art T. Bear uh, Kyle cover right there. Nice. It does look good. Yeah, I'm I'm excited and like I, I like my signature because it, I get I put it off to the side so it doesn't get it in in, in top of the image. When I got the the Starlight Cats, like Shane signs it right over to the, the the like the image. <laughs> but again, I mean this this is obviously the same insides as that one, but I mean the insides look great, nice and shiny. It does look good. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it's and and i think um i think irene is actually going to be going to the same printers that i use um because she had some problems with mixum um and she's and she's in a bit of a bind uh pun intended and um my my people have really quick turnaround time so when i was picking up my books on friday um the lady that i talked to was just like oh like irene just called me you know and i was like oh well let's okay. you, you should definitely do some business with her because you know she'll be a repeat customer for sure. Um, Blake, how's it your... going? Oh, it's going okay. Yeah, everything's going well. I've got some uh, coffee next to me, and mm -hmm. I like George. I stayed up and watched at least some of the auctions uh, yesterday. There was an Alterna one, and then there was the one on Red Valkyrie's channel. Amanda's in the chat. She got away with a pretty sweet uh, Roken piece. She, the she, quite... she won quite a few things yesterday. Yeah, okay. she, she was. She had a good day. We had a question or not, whether or not, because uh, you were a fan of, of the artist, whether or not you would want the extra piece of art that she got with it. Did you see what she got? Did you see the Roken piece? Who are you what asking, Blake? You, George. You, you, the oh, art collector. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't okay. sure. Yeah, she okay. got, uh, uh, Patrick, she got a Roken piece by Shelby Robertson. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, and, oh, okay. I know what piece that is. That's a good yeah. piece. Yeah, yeah and it came and with a couple got, of extras, too. Yeah, she got a, a attractive young lady in a bikini piece. From him as well, and I was wondering if that'd be something you'd be interested in buying no. off. Oh, okay, all right. No, Subject matter is just too off-putting, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got plenty of stuff from Shelby. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. But, uh, mm -hmm. Shelby is doing one of the packages for the new Johnny Phantasm figure. Um, like, I'm not sure if I did. I show the the Irene. You piece? show the Irene one. But you never never showed the the Shelby one. Well, the Shelby one doesn't exist yet, but oh. he, he, he's working on it. You also didn't uh, show the cover D yet either. Nope. Oh well, yeah, because I'm not going to show that. Yeah, ah. but 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 I do have a good question. So a, a lot of people, especially since I've been posting the Ultra Star stuff, they've been asking, you know, like how you know some people missed out on it. So, so some people, you know, um, back to the Sleepy Hollow thing because they're new to Comic Skate, but they they missed out on Ultra Star and Johnny Phantasm. But um, you know, they're asking about you know is is Ultra Star going to be available in the Johnny Phantasm campaign? So I've been thinking about this. You know, like maybe I should include it, but what what I might do is like it might not be a tier where it's like you get Johnny Phantasm and Ultra Star in a pack. You just get U Ultra Star separately, because once the campaign's done, I can ship those immediately. 
Does that make sense? That makes total sense. Mm-hmm. So you yeah, can't yeah. combine the shipping on. You have to pay separate shipping for it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because I mean, basically, it's two different products. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, and that way they can get the Ultra Star immediately, um, and they wouldn't have to wait for it. And that's the, that's the way I'm doing it with the figures too, because you know, you know, I, I pre-ordered the Johnny figures. Uh, so, you know, as soon as the campaign's done, those are going to be shipping out immediately. So, um, do you, I mean, is there anyone in the chat that, that, that didn't get ultra star, but wants it immediately and would like me to, uh, to, to, to put it in with the, uh, the, um, the Johnny Fantastic Extreme 93 campaign. I know. George I have a question wants- before moving forward on it. Um, what would be the difference in doing that and just leaving your store in demand? I know you've already closed it down. You're not going to reopen it. But what would be the difference in doing that in the future, just leaving that store in demand versus putting it on a different books campaign? Um, well, it's just like um, I, I, I kind of I kind of I'm, I'm in the same ballpark here with, with John Malin. I, I don't like always being in salesman mode. Mm, so, okay. so 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 if I close the campaign, I can kind of relax a little bit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So Lord Crackhead Jeremy is interested in that. Uh, I, yeah, I like Snuggy. I, I, I know, I know a lot of people got Ultra Star, but th- I'm talking about Ultra Star cover D, um, because we're going to be having a new, a new, I have a new cover for it. Um, oh, you need a glow in the dark, Johnny. I think I only have like two left, um, but I haven't put those up for sale yet because I'm kind of waiting to see. I, I, I have some, I still have some things to fulfill. Um, but, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna kind of just be be <laughs> burn the books. Don't, yeah, don't, I know. Don't, I saw don't. I saw John <laughs> John Malin doing that the other day. Don't do uh, that. Uh, and it kind of I was I was thinking of George how George just would try to not like seeing that. <laughs> um, see, Jasper said, did any non CG people back CP Hollow? Yeah, actually, a, a lot did. It, that, and that's kind of one of the things that. Uh, you know, like I try to do as far as an outreach program with the action figures and with stuff like Sleepy Hollow. Um, you know, like like we all have to kind of do our part and to kind of reach out to other people. Um, and I did snag some new people up with the toy and I did snag some new people up with Sleepy Hollow. And I know because they write me, you know, and they're like, I'm new to Comic Skate. You know, thanks for, you know, introducing me, you know, all this. Um, so, yeah, they, they those things do kind of outreach to people. Um what was D? D was a, a cover that no one has seen yet. Um, if you well, I mean, some people have seen it, but not a lot. So your question is, where, where do you want to do the second chance offer for Ultra Star, right? Because it's not only just cover D. You're going to reoffer cover A, which is the Roka Fort one, correct? Yeah, that's right. So 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 if people missed out on the Roka Ford cover and they want the Roka Ford cover, uh, or they they got the Roka Ford cover, but they just they're a, a completist and they want um, the cover D. Um, if you're interested in that option being available for Extreme ninety three, just give me a one. And if you do, if you don't care, give me a two. <laughs> um, I'm just trying to do a, a quick little straw poll here just to kind of figure out. So one. If you want, see, I would say eBay, but but eBay, um, eBay kind of rapes me. You know, it's not good. Ooh, that's bad. Yeah, like 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 eBay uh, takes quite quite a quite a big chunk. But okay, a lot of ones. <laughs> Vanessa doesn't care. <laughs> Jughead says I'm confused too. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no. There's no. Okay. Okay. So so just just to clarify, um, I I with with, with the Ultra Star order I just picked up, I. Did a cover D because I wanted to have a second chance campaign. Now my plan was to do a second chance campaign maybe after uh, Extreme ninety three was done, but I might include it in Extreme ninety three, but it'll be separate inside the campaign. So it's like if you order it, an Ultra Star book during in Extreme ninety three, you'll get it when that campaign ends, like which is like two months. You know what I'm saying? Or or when it goes into in demand. Um. So 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 you'll get them quicker. That's fine. I mean, you can do that, but you're going to have people that are going to ask you that aren't watching this right now. Hey, how do I combine this so I don't have to pay shipping? To you're going to get that question a hundred times. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, want. yeah. Well, I mean, it, there's always something. You know, it, there's always something. <laughs> yeah, in the description, you could just say this is in hand now and ships immediately. Okay. Well, uh, you know, something no, like yeah, that. Okay, he gets it. Still, too. Still doesn't care. Yeah. All right. 
You have a question from the Canuck and chat for not for Johnny Phantasm ninety three. Are you going to offer new glasses? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like the glasses thing is just something that we're going to just do forever because um, I like it. Like I have superhero glasses that I collect. I have peanuts glasses that I collect. I have like those old McDonald's glasses too. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, a, fan of this. I'm a fan of those things. Um, I used to have a Batman doormat. Remember, remember the Batman Forever Burger King glasses? Uh, I had I got Batman Forever McDonald's glasses. They had the Riddler and Two oh, I guess I guess they were McDonald's. I thought yeah. they were Burger King for some reason. Yeah, there's a Batman, a Robin, a, a Riddler, and a and that's a that's one where, where, where they're all molded, right? Yeah, they're crystal. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I still yeah, yeah. have them in my uh, basement closet somewhere. What glasses? Yeah, we got glasses. Well, let, let me. So there's been a lot, a, a lot of activity, activity over here. <laughs> there's a lot of activity. Yeah, George activity. says there's a lot of activity. Look at him. Um, He's trying to not say it right now. He's thinking it. So, uh, there's been a lot of traffic over here. I'll change that to, to saying like that. Um, so, so people have been scooping up a lot of Johnny Phantasm stuff. Um, and then here's an Ultra Star glass as well. We have some Johnny Phantasm comics. Now, this is the last time. You know, as soon as these are gone, these are gone. Like, because we're going to be putting up um, whole new books uh, for um, the Extreme Ninety Three campaign. Like, we're going to put a a collective graphic novel that's going to have all this stuff, eighty five and eighty nine in it. Hmm. Got one lunchbox left, a Michael Golden lunchbox. Um, but yeah, we do have glasses over here. So um, here's 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 uh, one of the Johnny glasses. Um, pretty sweet. And in the back looks like that. What happens yeah. when you stick it in the dishwasher? Does the stuff come off of it? No. Hmm. No, no, no. They're good. And then obviously, like we we have toys and stuff over here is available too. That I sell a lot of toys and stuff. Um, but the link is in the description if you're interested in any of this um, Johnny Fantastic stuff or some of the Ultra uh, Star swag as well. Um, it's available over here. I, like for some, some reason, I don't know. I guess I guess because it's Christmas time, but there's been a lot of traffic over here. So like when I got up this morning, you know, I had like five or six orders on eBay. That's um, good. Yeah, yeah. So I was excited to see that, and I was excited to see like people were grabbing lunch boxes, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. Now RMDO says that we need a George cup or a glass <laughs> or a mug. I guess so, George. Would you be a glass or a mug? Are you a coffee mug type of guy or a tall drink of water? Kind I drink of guy? out of plastic bottles. A so. tall bottle, <laughs> disposable. So, so you're you're, you're, a, you're a recyclable bottle type of guy. Exactly. Right. You drink coffee out of there, George? I don't drink coffee. Mm. You don't? Mm -mm. Tea? Don't, you're a tea I don't guy. Anything, I don't drink anything hot. Okay. I drink water <laughs> or diet. Soup? Well, I guess I eat my soup, but I water or diet Mountain Dew. It's all I drink. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Another piece of the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you care if you're going to get this glass and put it in the dishwasher if you're never going to use it? You just well, drink out of a can. He's just he's just being a good uh, co-host. He's just asking. <laughs> yeah. People are wondering. The chat wants to know. Yeah. Um. Just just real quick. Uh. Before we kind of move on with some stuff, I know a lot of people here in the chat have already, but make sure that you have signed up for the Johnny Phantasm Extreme, uh, pre-launch. Um, you'll be eligible to get, uh, well, I mean, first off, you can get the Shane Davis cover, which is looking super hot. Oh, so good. But, 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 but you can get the Shane Davis poker chip, which is going to be a rarity. And then you can just join the Riot Press mailing list and just be caught up to date with all, all Riot Press stuff that's happening over here. Um, I, I'm excited for this next year. I mean, I, I mean, um, well, first off, I'm very excited to get Ultra Star out the door. Um, once Ultra Star goes out the, the door, George, uh, that's four books that I've sent out this year. That's pretty impressive. Um, so you did 85, you did 89. No, that's I three did, books. I did, well, I did the, 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 the uh, 89 new cover, the Megacon. It's still the same book, though. Well, I, I, still, I, still, I still have to send them out. 85, 89, and Johnny Fanta and um, Ultra Star is three books. Well, three uh, the okay. same book, and you put a different cover on. It's still the same book. Is it okay, was it well, a different print run? Did you print it at a different time? No, I printed the same time. Yeah. Um, well, 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 okay. So let me let me rephrase that. That's that's four fulfillments I've done this year. That's correct. That? Okay. Okay. <laughs> can I can I have that, George? <laughs> you might have five because you would did eighty five. No, no, four eighty five. Yeah. The figure campaign, which is what eighty nine came with. 
the Rye Press goes to MegaCon, and then uh, Ultra Star four. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, well. If if I would have got Ultra Star a little sooner, I probably could have done CB Hollow, but I didn't want to send out CB Hollow before Ultra Star. You know, all that stuff. But how's Sleepy Hollow uh, looking? It's looking pretty good. I mean, I, I have um, I have about one. I have one more illustration to do, and I I just kind of um, I I just been tweaking here and there, uh, just like moving pages around. Mm-hmm. I'm really having fun with the design of the page because uh, I'm trying to have fun with like the letters. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's, it, I mean, there's a lot of words in this book. You know, what I'm saying it's it's more of a um a regular book with illustrations opposed to like a comic book. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to have fun with with the words. I want to make it exciting. Um, you still have time to I, change the ending too, if you want. <laughs> Don't change <laughs> no. the ending. No, no. Well, I, I'm gonna. You know, like I had some debate on whether or not I was gonna change some stuff in there because there's there's mm-hmm. some stuff in there that isn't too PC. Um. And I decided to leave it. You know, I was like, I'm not gonna. It's gonna stay the original, the original way. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mess with it. So that's gonna be that. But anyway, guys, run over here and sign up for Giant Fantastic Extreme 93. The link is in the description. Um, there's also a link for the splintering in the description too. So that's that's Blake's new site. Um, oh, thank you. Check that out as well. Um, but I have a couple of things I want to talk about. Now, some of these things I've already talked about, but we're gonna talk about them again uh, because. There's a lot of comic news happening this week as far as the industry is concerned and some things that are surprising. Well, surprising and also not too surprising. Mm. Uh, I was surprised by this. Um, Dark Horse Comics reportedly oh. looking for a buyer. Um, now, just not too long ago, um, Dark Horse was able to acquire the Star Wars All Ages comics again. Mm-hmm, now, mm-hmm. you know, like I like I know about Dark Horse because of the Star Wars comics, basically. You know, that's that's the main reason why I, I know who Dark Horse is. Now later on in life, Hellboy, obviously. But you know, like the reason why Dark Horse was even on a radar for me as uh, a young reader was because of the Star Wars comic books. Now when Marvel uh was bought by Disney, um they started doing the, the they brought the Star Wars comics over there. So that was a big chunk of Dark Horse's income right there. Um, again, like Dark Horse is one of those companies that is kind of on the fine line of um, having too many IPs. You know, it's like they, they, they have some of their own stuff, Hellboy, Ghost, um, some other things, you know, uh, Umbrella Academy. Um, but then they have a lot of IPs too, you know, and it's like, I, they, they, they. I think they relied a little too heavily on their IPs, um, but so now they're looking to sell w- again, which is strange because I think it was a week ago they said that, that they were going to be doing Star Wars comics again. I, I've read interviews with creators that worked for Dark Horse, like Frank Miller and Sin City, and he basically said like they gave me such a good deal I couldn't say no. So mm-hmm. I don't know how much of that those characters are their IP. I really think it's the creator that owns the whole thing. That was mm-hmm. my my assumption also, like the Hellboy and some of these other ones, that uh, they're not really controlled by Dark Horse so much. Yeah. I well, really then, associate well, the brand more with you know, like Aliens and, like you said, Star Wars. Aliens, don't have like aliens, either. aliens yeah. will put them on the map for me. That's when I started mm-hmm. reading. And actually, for a time, they were probably my second favorite publisher behind only DC. Well, well uh, Marvel has Aliens now. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't care less what they do. Yeah. So, so, it's, so it's interesting. It's like, it, I mean, if that's if that's true, um, th- then they have nothing. It's like, what are they selling? I don't know what their proprietary characters are. I know they had that Dark Horse Presents series for quite a long time, but even then, like the characters, I think were creator owned. Like, yeah, yeah. So well, the, that's the big character from that was Concrete with Paul Chadwick, and I'm pretty sure he owns that completely. Mm-hmm. And so that's I, been I really, over for a while, right? And he yeah. hasn't done that for a long He's time. He's a mini series and little one shots, but I can't think okay. of a single one that they have. Yeah, I mean, this is the question: like, do they own any IPs? I don't yeah. think they do. So, so it, it was weird. Like, so it's like looking at someone looking to buy Dark Horse. It's like, what are you buying exactly? The name, the 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 logo, uh, the name recognition. Um, I mean, I guess, I guess when you would buy them, some of the contracts would would carry over to the new buyer. Um, some might not. Yeah. You know, some some might be canceled if if the if the if the if the publisher is sold. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's interesting because you know Dark Horse has like I mean a lot of my friends have been big fans of Dark Horse for a long time, and some some people you know even the doctor who we all know, um, he was obsessed with Dark Horse. You know. Um, 
and it, again, it's one of those things that it's like I'm not sure what they own over there. So it's like if someone's looking to buy Dark Horse, I'm not sure what they're buying. You know? Yeah, I think it probably would just be the agreements and the you know the the deals that they've got with people because I don't think they really own much of any of those now, now, characters. Now normally, I would say you know if if Dark Horse is for sale, right? Um, normally, I would say uh, IDW would be buying them, right? <laughs> but I, I, don't, I, don't I don't think, think so. <laughs> I don't think IDW is doing much of anything right now because when you go to like Bleeding Cool, it's just all bad news. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's like this guy that was at Marvel is not the editor in chief anymore. You know, Chris Rael was uh, editor in chief for a very long time. He actually gave me my, my first gig in comics doing a 30, 30 Days of Night pinup. Um, and Chris Rael is over at Skybound now, which is a dramatic improvement for him because I mean, he, he's not in IP hell, you know, like uh -huh. if, if you want to talk about companies that rely solely on IPs, I mean, IDW is it. Um, but, but so, you know, some of the news that's happened and I've talked about this before, but I'm talking about it again because it makes me laugh because I, I've been making fun of transformer comic books over at IDW for quite some time now. Um, just because I, I, I don't think they had what it, it took to do a good transformer comic, you know, like, Transformers and G.I. Joe, the cartoon, is, is what got me into comic books because I would go down to the local gas station. They had Marvel and uh, like Marvel, G.I. Joe, and Transformer comics there, and I got into them. And they were actually good comics back then. Um, you know, like ever since I, I liked Dreamwave, you know, I thought Dreamwave. Oh, yeah. Was, I thought Dreamwave was the high point of the Transformers yeah, comics. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Dreamwave did really well with the Transformers. Pat Lee killed it. Mm -hmm. I mean, not in, in, in a good way, he killed it. Maybe in a bad way later on. Um, I think I think they just mismanaged their money a little bit. But Dreamwave did did a really good job with Transformers the way they looked, story wise, even the way that they talked. Like like I, I, you know I've I've picked up a couple Transformer comics here and there th throughout the years, and just the way that they would talk. I remember there was this scene where these Transformers were, were fighting. It was basically at the at the edge of the universe at the end of time. They're fighting right. Mm -hmm. And it, it, and they made a reference. The robots are talking to each other, and they're and they said, "Yeah, you know, we've got about three months." They were making a time reference. I'm like, "What's what's three months in space?" You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I like I don't even understand. Like, just the way they talked was so juvenile. It, it didn't make any sense. Um, now the editor that that was in charge of the Transformers stuff, he he went to a, a school that was right next to where I went to school, Ringling down here in Sarasota. Crazy SJW college. They, they don't even get out grades. It's just like a pass. Or <laughs> you get like, you get like oh, my God. Um, but it's a really, really crazy SJW school. You know, it's one of those schools where all the girls are just loaded with armpit hair. Um, so I, I'm not surprised that this happened, you know. And again, like I was looking at this cover before, and I, I found this cover uh, a couple times. But, I mean – like I'm a robot guy. I love robots. This is a really bad robot drawing. I mean, besides the fact that this has like Hawaiian fly flowers growing out of the side of the robot, just the details on the robot, it's just like it's just not a good drawing at all. Um, there's not good lighting on it. The metal is not handled well. There's no texture. It looks like the flats. Um, you know, when when in, in comic book uh, uh, making, when you put down colors you put down flats and you put the highlights on top of them this well maybe they ran out of time to do much with it maybe they had the flats and we're just like oh screw it make the, <laughs> well, make the put mean, some flowers on there you make time for it you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying um i mean like already like i could bring this in photoshop and i could clean this up and make it better um within an hour um but so it's like idw has been doing a really bad job with transformers for a while i'm not surprised that that hasbro has had it with them and mm. then also you know, they're losing G.I. Joe as well. Now, like, one of the reasons why... There, there's a couple of reasons why I think that, that they're losing... Why Hasbro is taking some of these properties away from them. Um, my, my, my first knee-jerk reaction is they don't have any money. You know? Like, like they just don't have any money to, to pay for these IPs anymore. You know? Um, and I, my, my, other, my other reaction is I feel like... Um, Hasbro's toys do very well. The G.I. Joe sales have been through the roof right now. Like, like people are fighting in Target for 
G.I. Joe exclusives. You know what I'm saying? You don't see that type of reaction for the comics, and there should be some type of buzz about the comics. Like, like th- there's no reason why there shouldn't be a very nostalgic G.I. Joe comic book. Um, now, the toys have been relying solely on nostalgia to sell, and they're, 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 they're going through the roof. You know what I'm saying? When, when someone that's like 40, 35 years old goes into the store and they see a G.I. Joe action figure, they have a certain amount of nostalgia that kind of comes back to them. You need that same type of nostalgia in the comic books. Now, it's okay to do new, new stuff. New stuff is good. You, you, you can make new creators, or not new creators, new characters. New characters lead to new toys. But there's a certain type of formula that works with G.I. Joe, you know? And I, well, first off, I think getting rid of the, the real American hero was a bad idea, you know? Um, they, they, they got rid of all that. I'm not even sure. Is it on this comic? It might not even be on this comic. Let's see what it says. Oh, okay, so it has to be, yeah, two ninety. Uh, but, but on the toys, the toys, I think that was a major fail that that, that they got rid of that the, the real American hero. Um, but 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 I just you know like I feel like th- there's a certain formula that you need to make a good GI Joe comic, and and Larry Hama, I, he definitely he definitely had the secret sauce. You know what I'm saying? But it's like he still he still writes GI Joe, and I think the guy has lost his edge. You know what I'm saying? It's like the the it's time to pass the torch to someone else that kind of gets it, you know, and, and GI Joe, you know, they, they've jumped the shark too many times, you know, with the female snake eyes jumping the shark completely um, with, with the random homosexual GI Joe that they put a lot of evidence on. Now there's okay to have gay GI Joes. You know what I'm saying? We had shipwreck for years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, and uh, you know, it was, it was fine. Um but it's it just like just how they do these things, or the overweight Salvo character, the one that says, you know, like, like we looked at the cover where it was like a, a chubby, look like a chubby Hawaiian chick. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's not what a a a a, um, a soldier looks like. Uh, so you know, all this, you know, I've been talking about this for a while. None of this is a, is is a surprise. I'm interested where it's going next. What do you yeah. think, George? I, I don't care about G.I. Joe at all. You don't like G.I. Joe? I thought you did. <laughs> like 35 years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm saying like, like but, but, so. I, I don't think those books have held up well. Like if I reread them now, I'm like, okay, I must have been a kid when I read that. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, no offense. Like, I Is think that why you're Larry, them all to me? I think Larry Hama <laughs> writes just like he did 35 years ago. It's just that we have kind of matured and he still writes exactly the same way. No offense. Well, yeah, well, there, there. That's a good argument. I mean, it's it's time to evolve. You know what I'm saying? It worked when we were younger. It's now that we're older. I mean, that, that's the way even cartoons are now. Like, if you watch a, a kid's cartoon from the late '70s and early '80s, cartoons are way more sophisticated now. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. like I, I'm I'm watching cartoons with T, and 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 she she sees one joke, but there's an underlying joke that she's like completely missing because there's layers to these cartoons. Um, there's no layers to this G.I. Joe stuff. What are you laughing at, George? Oh, the chat's funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Vanessa... I think this is uh, one of those things that I've been predicting for a while. I'm actually surprised that IDW hasn't lost this license already. I mean, with the G.I. Joe drama in, what was it, 2018? With uh, Aubrey Sitterson and, and pissing off all the G.I. Joe fans, I really expected that they would lose their uh, licensed all the Hasbro properties around that time. I think mm. ditching Real was one of the things that maybe they did to try and save that deal and fill that position. Although I think they kind of brought him back in some way, shape, or form. But there was a, there was a lot of uh, reporting. I think even on my website uh, uh, for the last year or two or three now. Gosh, twenty eighteen. I'm just about curious, that. What, like like like, what was the straw that, that broke the camel's back? You know, what I'm saying because. It, I, I think it. I think it's the the rising sale of the toys doing very well, and they're like, wait a minute, like this product is selling good. How come this product is not selling good? Yeah, it might um, very well be that. I mean, again, it's all Hasbro stuff, right? Because we're not talking about just GI Joe. We're talking about the Transformers, and even what My Little Pony is still Hasbro. Uh, yeah, I don't. I have I'm no not, idea I, how well that sells. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think I actually think that My Little Pony stuff sells good because there's a lot of weirdos out there. Uh, but uh, yeah. It, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I, like, it's gonna be interesting to see if, if they take that away from them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, what, what I have to you, imagine they'll take it do? away and and use the whole uh, collection. That's what they've done. What in would the you past. do, Patrick? You're in charge of the GI Joe combo book right now. You are in charge creatively of the whole thing. 
what what do you do? How do you fix it? Uh, well, I mean, you, you like what I would do. You know, if if I was put in charge right now, I would start a comic book that starts right after like season four, and just kind of go along with the cartoon because everyone knows the cartoon because the cartoon kind of went along with the comic book at the time. Although the comic book was very heavy, Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, which I appreciated. But I would, I would kind of just, I would kind of just forget everything that's been done the past couple of years and just start over, just, just, just start from scratch, um, and just uh, again do heavy nostalgia, you know, mm. like like real heavy nostalgia stuff because that's what people are into. I saw someone in the chat. Yeah, I, I think they got rid of mask a while ago because I pitched IDW a mask idea um, a couple years ago, and they said that they weren't doing any more mask stuff. Hmm. Um, so, so, so they've actually had some time to kind of come up with some stuff. You know, they did. They, they were doing ROM, and they were yeah. going to have the whole ROM uh, Transformers GI Joe mask crossover. Never did what? anything. What do you think about? I know I've, a long time ago I was listening to one of uh, your boy Zach's videos, and he's talked about GI Joe. Eli's a big Joe fan, and he feels like GI Joe is being misused in that it's only a book and not more of an expanded universe. Mm -hmm. So, like, there could be a mainline GI Joe care or book, and maybe a Snake Eyes book, and and a Baroness ongoing no, book. Absolutely. You know those absolutely. sorts of things. That's a great idea. So yeah, yeah, I, I, mean, I kind of. I'm interested to see if someone could do something like that. Have some of those smaller, you know, character-driven stories with some of the more popular characters, no, and then the big it, team books. Yeah, John, uh, I would definitely do a Sepentor story. I think there, I think that like the Sepentor is very untapped. You know, it's like after Rise Sepentor Rise, they didn't really do a whole lot with him. Like he was kind of like a blumbering idiot. Like they didn't do a whole lot to him. Um, now. I actually liked the movie. I liked Cobra Law. I thought Cobra Law was pretty cool. Um, I liked the Royal Guards. I liked uh, Nemesis of Forcer. Um, and I like the one with uh, Jinx and Don Johnson. Yeah, I remember that movie. Yeah, yeah, Don Johnson. I mean, come on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but 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 Cobra but Commander would, turned I, into a snake, I think, for real, right? Yeah, yeah, and then and then that's what that's when he got the 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 silver uh, costume after that, which is actually my favorite cover commander is when he's in uh, a silver suit. That's the um, worst one. <laughs> no, well, I, I liked it a lot. It's actually it's it's one of the only twenty fourth twenty fifth anniversary figures I own. But I feel like um, there there you know, and then after after the movie, they did Python Patrol and they did Tiger Force, which were, were both good lines, but they never did anything with it. Um, shortly after that, they had the Slaughter Marauders, which is which is another good line. They didn't do anything with it. Now, Sunbow wasn't making the cartoon at that time, I believe. It was someone that else that bought it. So the cartoons were a little bit weird. But I would have picked it up right after um, the Slaughter Marauders versus uh, the Python Patrol and just kind of r r ran with it. Now, I think Blake had a good, a good point. Like, you could do little offshoots. I mean, you could, like, like... I had this idea, and and dude, like, I've spent so many times, like, that's why I, I, I'm bringing this this thing up in front of us. I, I've I've done so many pitch ideas that, I mean, I've this made for myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I I I would like to do a story about Beachhead, just a story, just about Beachhead. You know, that talks about Beachhead, about him growing up, about him going through the the Joe recruitment process. Um, and about him leaving the Joes, I, I like. I was thinking about like what would be a good way uh, for for um, for uh, Beach had to leave the Joes. Like, what would he do? Um, and the story that I wrote, uh, he he became an MMA fighter uh, because it was like like what 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 else is this person going to do if he's not in the Joes? You know, this guy that can fight really well. So like I, I put together this story where it's like Beachhead had to come out of retirement. He was an MMA fighter. The Joes needed him for something. Uh, and you know, there's there's so many things you could do. You could do an offshoot of Stalker. You could do an offshoot of Lifeline. Lifeline is still one of my favorite Joes out there. Um, the guy never uses a gun, even though he came with a gun, which confused me as a kid. Um, well, they had to give him something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not sure if they if if the cartoon was in tune with the toys at that time. Um, John, you're, you're getting Mexican this early in the day. This early in the day. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. It depends if you're getting. I guess, I guess if you're getting tacos, it's cool. But if you're getting enchiladas, that's a dinner thing. No, this Mexican's good all day long. You get the breakfast burritos <laughs> in the morning. You get a taco at lunch. Dude, at at the Tampa Bay Comic Con, they had this insane food truck outside. It was um Korean Mexican fusion, hmm. and it was like these these Korean tacos that were so good. But anyway, hmm. so uh, like I was just kind of surfing around because again, you know, I I love. I love you know the the old Hasbro properties, Mask, GI Joe, Transformers, and and I, I I went on their website and I actually pulled this up and this is a request permission form to use a GI Joe property or a Hasbro property, um, and as you can see on there, you can have a book, magazine, print advertisement, tel- uh, 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 television advertisement, and then it goes down to even toys down below this. So, you know, I was thinking, why not? You know, like I've, I've, I literally have three pitches on deck. Um, why not, why not put, send them in to these big wigs at Hasbro and see what they have to say about it? Because every time I pitched an idea, I was, go, I was always going through the, the clowns at IDW and they couldn't fucking find their, their ass with both hands. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it's like I, I figured, why not? I mean, it, it's it, I had the stuff made. I wouldn't be doing any work, you know what I'm saying? Um, and then the worst thing they would say is no. Um, but I have a really good idea for a mask Transformers crossover that I've been salivating at for years now. I I, I think everyone has seen seen the yeah, art. Yeah, you keep before. throwing that uh, teaser art for it, which looks pretty nice. Yeah. Um, you know, I have a. Uh, a World War II Transformers story that I, I pitched IDW right before I came to Comicscape, and that was one of my last straws because I was just like, okay, you guys just don't know what you're looking for. Um, and uh, and then, you know, just doing a regular Transformers idea. So I, I, I have a couple things on deck um, with a couple tweaks. I, I figured I would, I'd send them in, and my pitch would be, Hey, I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a crowd a comic book crowd funder. My company's called Riot Press Productions LLC. Let me do one book. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the worst thing they're, they're going to say is no. Now the question is, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm always ready to be a guinea pig. Um, but it, it wouldn't be that much. I mean, so so like uh, like Shane was talking about the other day. Like Shane was just like he he, he wouldn't want to have anything to do with doing anything like this, you know. Now Shane's worked a lot in the mainstream, so he's kind of he's he's, he's got fed up with making these things, you know. Because if I make something for Hasbro, it's theirs, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I, I haven't been through the meat grinder yet, so I'm I'm not I'm not quite uh you know as as against it as as. Mm-hmm. You know, Shane or maybe EVS would be. Although, yeah, I just think, don't give them your best ideas. Well, those are all my ideas. Like, uh, okay, I don't have any bad ones. They're all the best. That's what, <laughs> that's what best means. Uh, so um, I can give them some watered down ideas. How about that? My ideas um, are all the best ideas. They're the greatest. What would I do with Duke and Flint? Well, I'm not. A, I'm not a big fan of Duke, but I do like Flint a lot. Um, I think if I was going to do something with Flint, now hear me out here. They've never fleshed out the situation with Flint and Lady J. Now, I know I'm not saying do a love story, right? But I think it would be cool to do something with Flint and Lady J to kind of flesh that out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Flesh it out. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I, I I think there's some some untapped potential there between Flint and Lady J, some story storyline wise. You know, um, it's just just what I'm thinking. What's up, Don? How's it going? Is Lady J the lady that had the spears that when she turned them, she got really got really big? Was I her? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I always thought that was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> Girl, uh, George don't like. So, so yeah, I'll 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 do a, a, a guinea pig move here, and I'll I'll write them because I'm just curious. So, like when I was going to school um, at the Cuba School, drink. When I was going to school there. Um, G.I. Joe just came out with Devil's Due through Image. It was like, it was, it just came out. G.I. Joe was on a hiatus for maybe 10, 11 years. And it just came out. This is even before Transformers was being put out through Dreamwave. Um, I, uh, I actually called Hasbro and asked them about Mask and if they would, and, and asked them if they were interested in doing a Mask comic book. And they were all about it. They were like, yeah, they're like, send us the pitch. Now at the time, I was way too inexperienced. I was my second year at the Cupid School. 
Um, I was way too experienced like to put together an idea, but it was crazy that I, I actually got them on the phone. You know, it's like, and they were like, yeah, they're like, let's do something with masks. What's your idea? So it's, 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 it's interesting that a company is that willing to listen. Now, if you go to Walmart, you see GI Joe transformer stuff everywhere. You see show, soap, you see toothbrushes, you see sticker books, you see coloring books. They um, still make mask all... things. No, I thought you just said you could see mask and GI Joe stuff everywhere. Did I say mask? I meant transformers and GI Joe. I'm sorry. Okay. So go um, ahead, finish what you were saying. You see transformers and GI Joe stuff yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So, so, so they license this stuff out quite often. Um, my, 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 my pitch to them would be. Let me let me do a World War II uh, Transformers one shot through Riot Press, you know, and I'm my editor, you know what I'm saying? It's like we're we're, we're doing it on my terms, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I I'd be just, I'd just be interested, to, like to, like to see what what they would say, like what like how much they would, you know, uh, I'm sure it'd be a percentage thing, you know. Um, I'm, I'm curious just what what they would be talking about now, like. When it comes to Marvel and DC, like I have no love for any of those companies. I wouldn't do. I would. I have no interest in, in doing my version of Batman. I, and although I, I love Daredevil, I have no interest in doing my version of Daredevil. But I still have a lot of love for Transformers and GI Joe. Um, again, it was my gateway to comics. Uh, it, it was a big part of me growing up as a kid. Um, so, like, I, I, I still feel like. I, I, I have some something in me that I'd like to contribute. You know what I'm saying? And if I could come up with a, a, a new transformer that would be made into a toy, that'd be awesome. You know, that that's a that's a bucket list thing right there. You know what I'm saying? Obviously it would be theirs and it would be it'd be theirs forever. And I know that. Um, but I still have some love for, for Hasbro, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I I'm gonna go I'm gonna I'm gonna some sometime in the next next uh week or so i'm gonna go ahead and, and put something together and send it their way uh and uh, like the worst thing that, that, that they say is get lost kid you don't have the magic you never did you know and i'm like okay that's fun but it, it, it's just it's, it's one of those things that it's i'm here let's just do it you know let's try it um what i, what I, I heard someone say something about uh, I, I missed a couple interesting chats. I'm going back to see we, what we have here. Someone said something about uh, Shipwreck not being gay. I think the last mask thing they did was the Matt Tracker figure in the G.I. Joe 25th line. Yeah, I got him. I got him in, in the case over there. He, he's, I mean, he's a good figure, but it's like it, making a Matt Tracker figure without the Camaro is just like a waste. You know what I'm saying? It's just like there, there's, there's no... There's no point of that. Now, I think, you know, talking about like Hasbro and, and some crowdfunding stuff, they're trying to, to, to crowdfund the, uh, the, the Sky Striker right now. And it doesn't look like it's going to make it. Uh, like, uh, George, do you know what the Sky Striker is? No, I really don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, you're shaking your head like you know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. <laughs> well, the, the, the Sky Striker is, is, the, is the jet from G.I. Joe. And they're and they and they're they're trying to to crowdfund a new version of it. It's way too expensive. Um, now this is like the Tomcat looking jet, or is this the blue Cobra jet? No, it's a Tomcat looking one. It looks, okay, it looks like the, the 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 jet from Top Gun. Okay. Uh, but um, they they the, it looks like they're not going to make it uh, as far as crowdfunding is concerned. Um, I think there's a couple of reasons behind that. Like right now, it's the six inch line that is hot. If they did a Sky Striker in the six inch size, it, it would be funded immediately. Um, but they're, they're they have too many things going on right now, and I don't think it's gonna get funded. But I do think the Sky Striker was a gateway to the the U.S. flag. I think they were gonna do the do the Sky Striker first, and then they were gonna do a new U.S. flag. So um, that's what I think about that. Anyway, um, I saw someone say something about uh, shipwreck. It was funny. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was way too expensive. It just wasn't worth it. Um, Blake, you had <laughs> some auctions, some some you had some stuff you wanted to bring up, right? Some some uh, um, yeah yeah. What what I want to do first? What was that? I Is it a raffle? Remember. No, it's not a raffle. But I mean, I gave something away last week, and since it's the <laughs> Christmas season, I'm gonna try to give some stuff away this week. But what I'm gonna do first, I'll share my screen uh, because I want to go over one of the reviews that I did this week because that'll lead into where we're going. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, hold on. Let me get out of here. Yeah. 
So are we sharing or are we not? Oh, hold on. I was, I was, I'm bringing up one thing before we do that. Just to have it ready. Give me one second. Okay. All right. I'll bring it up right now. All right. Go for it, Blake. All right. Yeah, there we are. So I want to bring up uh, one of our Jolly Jinglings um, posts from this week, which is a review of a book called Scary Christmas. And it's kind of interesting because I think uh, on your recent Thursday night stream, you were talking about European horror themed Christmas traditions, right? You're talking yeah. about Krampus and stuff with mm -hmm. um, your co-hosts. And this is actually a book that is all about that sort of thing. Um, it's a anthology book that's got three short stories that are based on European Christmas traditions that are all horrific. Um, it's published by a company called American Mythology Productions. So it's one of the smaller production houses. Uh, and it's a black and white book. But I actually kind of enjoyed it. I, I think the, uh, the I mean, there's clearly a different level of artwork in each story, different artists. Um, and each one has kind of its own flair. But uh, I, I did enjoy this book quite a bit and there's a second one coming out later this month so this was the first issue of what they called scary christmas it's from i think two years ago maybe three and they're bringing out a second one uh sometime at near the end of this month but it's definitely adult uh there's full nudity in it and tons of violence and things like that so definitely go check story. Hmm? yeah i mean it's a european <laughs> christmas story the stories that they talk about uh let's see the first book was a uh, was based on something they called the Joel Katharun, something like that, the Yule oh, Cat, which is an Icelandic Christmas tale. And mm. then let's see if I'm at to go back. And the second one is based on an old legend called Hans Trap, which is a German or French uh, legend about this Christmas scarecrow named Hans mm. Trap. And then the third story was. Yeah, I, I, I like this idea. Mm. I, I feel like, I feel like. It, 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 there's not enough Christmas comics out there. It's actually yeah, it's hard to find some of these. Things. No, I'm serious. It's like, a like, horror like, comic. Mm -hmm. it's yes, it's Christmas. a horror. But it's all Christmas stuff. It's all Christmas. George, the book is called Scary Christmas. Bunch of heathens around yeah. there. And so ahead. the next, the last story was uh, called Need Is a Pin, and it's um. See, I'm trying to. Okay, yeah, Frau Perchta, which is an Austrian story about this old lady that shows up and punishes you if you leave messes on Christmas. Mm. So um, if you're interested in that sort of thing, and again, I remember you were talking about it earlier this week or late last week, it's definitely a good, good book to try out and explore some of the darker sides of Christmas traditions. But yeah, gonna... no, no, I, I do. I like, so it's like, like, like back to what I was just talking about. Like, I like when, you know, back in the day when, when Marvel would have like a Christmas special or like, uh, oh, look, it's Blake. Uh, yeah. Hey, look, it's I've Blake got it here. Screen. He's got it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but uh like um I, Blake looks I, like Santa like, Claus a little bit, doesn't he? With his red sweater yeah, and the beard. Really yeah, out. yeah. I'm I'm Santa today because I'm what I wanted to do. If we're ready to go and talk about it, yeah, I'm yeah, happy to it. send this book. Actually, I have three books that I would like to send to people in the chat. This is going to be sending you books, not games. So maybe more people will be interested in receiving this than they were a switch code last week. Um, <laughs> but the first book that I'd like to give away. Is called scary. Is scary Christmas the one we talked about? Yeah. So like we have a, a copy of that here. Yeah, it's pretty that's neat. Cover got the black cat and the bloody hook. Yeah, yeah. So there's that one, the black and white horror book. This is a religious themed one, the life of Christ, the Christmas story. I haven't reviewed this for the site yet. I'm gonna. Re I've, I've read it. I've written my notes Marvel that I Comics. need to. Yeah, Marvel Comics 1993 or so. So wow. they never publish it now. Um, but, uh, this one's definitely intended, I think more for kids. Um, it's very, it's a pretty faithful representation of the biblical story, but it does cover a lot of ground. He died. And, uh, what's that? I said, don't spoil the end for me. Okay. Well, I'm, I'll just say <laughs> it does span all the way from the angel visiting, um, uh, Zach Zachariah, Zechariah and Elizabeth and foretelling the coming of John the Baptist. And it goes all the way to the flight to Egypt. So if mm. that means something to you, that's actually a lot of ground to cover. In like 30 pages um but this one's good if you've got kids and you think that they might enjoy a christmas version of a comic version of the christmas story and then i have red sonia holiday special which i reviewed previously for jolly jinglings month George, um, that one. this no, one 
He loves dynamite. No, I don't. Um, well, this it, <laughs> this is not that great of a book, in my opinion. It's no. from the the storyline where she goes to modern day America and through some sort of portal or whatever, and so she's Christmas. What's Christmas? And so oh, she's getting you know all that kind of dopey stuff. Um, but I mean, that's it's like, still at least it's like, Red Sonia like in her mail. That's armor. like Jason in, 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 in Manhattan. Remember yeah. That one? Yeah. That, I mean, it's that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so it's fish out of water Christmas story, but with a, you know, hot redhead in a chain mail bikini. So those cool are the cover. three I'd like to give away um, today. And you can also, when you, it, when you win, because I'm going to have a little contest associated with it, you can pick a poster from one of the crowdfunding campaigns that I've supported because I don't have any place to put some of these posters. Uh, these are all going to be fold out posters. First of all, be a Johnny Fan has a poster in that. No, 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 no. I don't think you give me a poster. <laughs> um, I do have, first off, this is a smaller one, an Alterna Comics logo poster, and it's signed by Peter Samedi up there. I actually do have plenty of things signed by Peter, so I don't have any place to put this. So you could take your pick of that poster or another smaller one, the Flying Fortress poster. Mm. Now, this one looks pretty slick, but again, I just don't really have any place for this. So that like, was but, 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 but do you have any places for these? I don't have any place for this. I have no place. There are no places for this for me to put them. Um, let's see. What's this one? Okay. The black and white 2020 calendar. What's up, Eric? So this is split right down the middle. So you can probably chop this off if you want just to display this as an art print. And 2020 being, you know, the worst mo the worst year ever before 2021. And now 2022 isn't looking great. That's the spirit. Yep, 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 yep. And then I've got tons of, um, what was it, Splato Comics fold-out posters. Now, these are bigger. Iron Sights, two Psychos. I've got this poster here, which is Kelsey's cover art. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. So you could pick from that one. This is the Nexus one, which is a sweet poster. Oh, man. But I'd like to remind everybody I don't have a place to put this one. <laughs> so since I don't have that place, I'm going to let you pick from this one. So, yeah. Nexus. Is that, that, is that Kelsey was, too? I think so, yeah. I think that one was his. And then the Expendables Go to Hell. I have the Punching Hitler in the Face, <laughs> Captain America um, inspired poster for that one. Nice. And I've got that one actually came with two posters. So I have this other Expendables. Go to hell poster, which is the characters here. Oh, that's a good likeness of uh, Sly there. Yeah, I don't remember uh, who the artist in this. Okay, uh, Kyle Ritter, I guess, because well, I, I see his name down there. So either he's a colorist or both the artist and the colorist. I, so I actually you can... agree with this. By the way, we do need some black and white uh, action figures. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah. So, I'm... gosh, there's more of these than I thought. Okay, so I've got also the Do as You're Told poster, the Ballad of No, which I thought was one of uh, your boys' better books. But again, I just don't have any place for these posters. So there's that one, and then yeah, well, it, it's it's funny because you know I was getting into the whole posters thing too, but I liked George's suggestion to do the smaller prints. It was the chat are... suggestion. Yeah, yeah, it's it's mm. easier to hold on to those, you know. Yeah, so here's the Ballad of No cover art poster. So I have that one, and then I've got two sexy Iron Sights posters here that you can choose from. Um, these are by Sashi. I don't remember what this character's name is, but so there's this one, which not only do I not have place for this, there's no way I'm getting away with what, hanging this in my house <laughs> with, with two young daughters and my wife. Right. And then the one from two psychos, which is this one here, but that one's okay. This one's fine. I could probably put this one in my, you know, <laughs> yeah, this one's fine. So anyway, I'd like to give one book away, and then you could pick the book, and then you could pick a poster. And so then... what's the process here? What's the process? Okay, I'm just going to do something very simple, and I'm going to do like a trivia thing with Christmas um, carols, Christmas songs. And I have some questions, and so whoever blurts out the answer first in the chat will get to pick from the books and get to pick a poster. And then when they send me their, their information, if there's anything else that they like, like if they like, oh, like, say, if you're George and you like, uh, you know, swear words and X-Men, mm -hmm. right? That he yeah. can say, I really these like swear words. Things. Yeah, these are some of the things I like. I like the X-Men and swear words. Then I'll look and see if there's anything else I have that's X-Men uh, that I can send you. I wouldn't do anything super 
obscure. Don't be like, oh, I really like what was the man eating cow or something. And that's all I really like because I probably don't have anything I can send you. But if you say I like DC or I like Superman or I like Spider Man, something like that, I'll see if there's something else I can throw in there. No promises on that. You will definitely get the book in the poster one way or the other. So hopefully everyone's ready. Hopefully everyone has is all geared up. And if I'm excited to well, hear the trivia. They're not that. I don't think they're that tough. Uh, George, you are not able to take part. Maybe no, no, I just want to hear it. Okay. So uh, I think Amanda's in the chat also. I don't know if should we let her partake since she's a contributor she to the website. She can partake. She's in the chat today. She can partake. Uh, okay. All right. I mean, it would be per perfectly fair if she won, right? Because she would get the answer first. I've not oh, shared any of asking U.S. Done. only? Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm not made of money. <laughs> I hate to tell you that, but I can't pay to send this. I'll ship them in a, um, a Gemini mailer. I've got a stack of used Gemini mailers over here. So they'll be coming we to you do. nicely. Right. So U.S. Um, only, please, chat. Yeah, it will be U.S. only, and I apologize for that. Um, well, I mean, it is what it is. But again, not made of money. But So the first question I have is, what popular Christmas song was actually written as a Thanksgiving song? And it's one of the most, one of the most popular Christmas songs out there. George, you know the answer to this? Mm -hmm. You do know this one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. I haven't seen it yet. People are, are it's okay. Rasmus is saying right ship now. them in a Ziploc bag. <laughs> uh, I, I I I remember because I, I I listen to a lot of like mm -hmm. um like uh, autumn music mm -hmm. and Christmas music like when I was doing mm -hmm. CB Hollow, mm -hmm. and this song used to come up a lot on the autumn stuff, and I was like, <laughs> I was all like, right, what about up here? <laughs> what about says Google time? All right, they get a lot of answers here, but none of them are correct. I see baby, it's cold outside. That's wrong. I'll be home for Christmas. That's wrong. Some of these are good guesses. These three kings dashing through the snow. So really, really popular song. You have to have okay. the actual. Yeah, there it is. Okay, the artist formerly known as Hey Mike Mike, Jingle Bells, was yep. actually written as a Thanksgiving song. So he's the first one to get it, right? Yeah, the dashing through the snow was actually the first line of the song. Oh, that's true. Yeah, um, so, I'm, at to, I'm at to go with you. Had to know the name of the song. Yeah. Um, and the artist formerly known as Hey Mike Mike, you are the winner. So hit me up either on the splinter the underscore splintering on Twitter if you're there, or you can contact me through the splintering at hotmail dot com and give me your mailing address, and I'll send you the book that you want and the poster that you want. Which poster and which book do you want, Mike Mike? formerly known as which book you've got the life of Christ, scary Christmas and red Sonia, which one sounds like the best, best fit for you. And I'll put it to the side. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and what about said, you know, they may think uh, Thanksgiving songs, I guess we're probably in a little bit of a lag. So we may not even be hearing me ask the mm -hmm. question yet. So I'll just have to BS it a little bit. So we're still waiting on his answer there. <laughs> But you can get the next one ready, right? You yeah, I've got the next one ready. Okay. Um, we can go ahead and do that again. So Mike, Mike sent me send me which book you want. You want Scary Christmas. You want it's Scary Christmas great. and what yeah, that's poster? A good choice. That's a good choice. He didn't All mention right. the poster, but we at least you know the book, so you can keep yeah, going. Yeah, so we've got the post. Just tell me which poster you want, and I'll put that to the side. And again, contact me either by email or uh, through Twitter, DM, something like that. I would say. And we'll if, get this sent out to you. If I was Mike, I, I would go for the uh, – Nexus poster. The Nexus poster is pretty sweet. I like the Flying Fortress one the best, actually. Mm -hmm. But I again, I just don't have any place to put these things. <laughs> um, so next, let's go ahead and do the next question. Okay, this one I think is a little harder. I'm a little surprised more people didn't know Jingle Bells. But the next question is, a good King Wenceslas was looking down on what? Wait, what? Good King Wenceslas. A good King Wenceslas is the name of the song, and there's a line in the in the song. Good King Wenceslas looked down on what? What's he looking down on? Oh, I don't know this one. So, George, do you know this one? He knows the. He I, I don't. He knows the. He wants the Flying Fortress poster. Okay, so we've got Scary Christmas and Flying Fortress poster. And again, just send me something um, in your Old message Dirty about. Old Dirty Fatty has an answer. I think it's the right. Feast of Stephen. Yes, that's correct. So, Old Dirty Fatty, you nailed it. You nailed it. The Feast of Stephen is what Old. Or good King Wenceslas was looking down on. So let me know what you which it's, one it's, you it's want. Close. You've got you've got Red Sonia and the Life of Christ. Um, I would say the Life of Christ. Yeah, I think I think this too. is the best read. Um, there. I mean, I haven't reviewed it yet, but I can tell you it's, again, it's pretty 
it's pretty uh, consistent with the biblical story. Some of the coloring gets a little wonky in places, um, so a little lazy, I think. But it just depends. I mean, if you, especially if you've got kids and you think they'll enjoy this, I think that's probably the better pick. But let's see what he says. Um, and don't forget so to old, choose your poster too. OG. Yeah, old dirty fatty. Yeah, let me know which poster you got. Of course, the uh, he wants Life of Christ and the Nexus poster. The two best things in my okay. opinion. Okay, all right. So we got Nexus and Life of Christ, and that's going to old dirty fatty. Now we've only got the one book left today, which is Red Sonia. But you're still going to get your pick of posters, and we'll go down to the next song. And now this one, I think, I, I also think this might be a little easy, but we're going to ask it anyway. So in the twelve days of Christmas. What is day 11? Ooh. Who knows day 11? Patrick, do you know day 11? I'm surprised you don't know day 11 if you don't know it. Uh, I, 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 if they sang the whole song, I wouldn't figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Day 11. What, what is the present on day 11? Turtle well, doves, no. Turtle doves, that's not right. Yeah. No, it's not turtle doves. 11 Piper's Pipe. Nope, it wasn't that. <laughs> RMDO. I think people are just saying that whatever line they can think of. <laughs> oh, yeah, <here>. right. <laughs> uh, it's uh, this. It's not Lords of Leaping. Socks. Got a lot of people saying Lords of Leaping. Now you're going to make me want to check because I think I checked and it's not. <laughs> Let me double check. Uh, but I'm pretty sure. Nope, it, there it is right there. Ladies Dancing. Sumo Thori, I think, he had it first, right? Uh, that, uh, that's the most important one. Yeah, that's why I was like, I can't believe, Patrick, you don't know how many ladies oh, dancing there are. <laughs> so, yeah, you the think, answer, the answer is brow. 11 ladies dancing. So, Sumo Thori, <laughs> I can mail this one out to you. It's the Red Sonia Holiday Special published by George's favorite company, Dynamite. So, um, we'll send that to you. And also, what, it, what poster do you want? Make sure you let me know uh, what poster you would like. And then in the message to me, either on Twitter or on uh, DM or um, via email, let me know which uh, other stuff that you particularly like, you know, Marvel, DC, Superman, Dark Horse, Aliens, anything, you know. IDW. Oh, IDW, yeah, anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so That's he wants fun. one of the A. Which one do you want? So I've got, how many do I have? I've got AAT posters. That'd be... Give them two. You have no place for them anyway. Well, I know, but I have other. I would like to do another giveaway next week oh. if I can. So I've got more stuff. I'm just limiting mm. it to three today, right? So which one would you like? Let's say it, we've got this is the book two poster, and this one was the book the book one poster. So Sumo Thori, which one would you like? <laughs> we're just waiting i, I like, the, I like the one with the, with the martini glass if i was gonna pick one i think it's a bit I, yeah the coloring job's a little bit better on that one um i like her waist but uh let's see book two. okay he wants book two okay so you're getting the book two red sonia and again just remind me whenever you send me a message saying yo this is sumo thori otherwise i won't know who's who um and we'll get those sent out to you i'd like i'd like to do this again maybe next week if I've got more books to send out, I'm reviewing more things as we speak. And so I, I hope y'all had fun doing this. If you thought this was horrible, then just say, yeah, I don't I ever want to. Yeah. I know you might think it was fun, but you thought last week was fun. Well, that was and last funny. week was a That's nightmare no, trying funny. to give those things different. away. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do it again next week. If everyone had fun doing this. What do we got here, Patrick? Uh, Oh, so I just wanted to bring up an example of just uh, my idea for the mask transformer crossover, what it would look like. Um, I, I put this up on, on on the Twitter, but not everyone has Twitter, right, George? I do not. Uh, so, so I wanted to share this with everyone. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, um, obviously, if I you know if I if I pitch this idea, it, it wouldn't be mine. It, Hasbro would own it, but it would still would be cool to see these toys made. Um, I, I basically just flipped the universe where the Thunderhawk would be kind of like a jazz type of blue streak type of transformer. And then um, the Optimus Prime character would be kind of more like Matt Tracker. I, I was thinking that like um, the wheels would go underneath the truck, kind of like the DeLorean and Back to the Future, and it would hover around and would make it into some type of vehicle like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how this next week goes. I, I might. I might have some time to uh, the the kind of just. I mean, it, it'd be a fun experiment just to kind of 
to share the response with the chat, at least, you know, of, of what I, they say. I know uh, yeah, how much. Congrats to everyone that, 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 that one of those looks in those posters. That's fun. Thanks for doing that, Blake. I know how much oh, yeah. these toys and characters mean to you, Patrick. So in that aspect, I, I hope that, that someone says yes to this. But for me, being selfish, I'd rather you just stick with your own stuff. No, no, no. Well, I, I'm kind of torn. It's like, it's not, I'm not even sure if I want to do it, but I just want, I want to talk about it. I, 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 I'm I, curious. Like, I, I, like, think I care more fun. about what happens with Ultra Star than what happens with Optimus Prime. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not trying to be funny and I'm not trying to bring the show down or anything, but like, I just don't care about Optimus Prime at all. And I don't think it's just me being like old or anything, but like, your characters are something new and it's unique and, and it's what i've been looking for something like completely different and new everyone yeah, keeps yeah, saying yeah. there's no creative ideas anymore mm. but i see creative ideas i see you doing creative things but then you want to go do this nostalgic stuff you see what well, i'm saying yeah. like, i'm not trying to get you upset by saying that no no, no no this this is pure self-indulgence you know what i'm saying that like mm. like i i th this is just the inner kid of me and mm -hmm. I, like, and I and and I, I agree with George too. Like, I, I'm not, I don't disagree with that, mm -hmm. you know. But but you know about you know being an artist, you know half of it, especially when you're a commercial artist like I am, it's like half of it is you have to make stuff that people want, and then the other half is you have to kind of entertain yourself as well. Um, so um, I don't know. I like I yeah. Everyone's with you, George. So I, I kick me. <laughs> 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 oh, I get well, it, man. Well, okay, I mean, so, so many of the okay, other so, creators got a chance a to. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. Well, I'm gonna bring up something. Okay. I, actually, I'm not sure. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm not signed in on Facebook in here. Damn it. Hold on. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna oh, send something. Is that Black Side? Yeah. How's he doing? Uh, he's here. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, he isn't in the best. You know, uh, he's he's a little banged up, but uh, he's 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 still here. Hold on, I'm just sending something to my wife real quick so that I can bring it up on here. Um, she's gonna be like, "Why are you sending me pictures of Transformers?" Um, so talking about okay, like no one wants to see me doing other Transformers, Whoa. but you know something I've been talking about for a while on here. No, not that one. Is uh, you know I've been working with a designer in um, in uh, Europe. Who who you know specializes in well he's 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 actually an air traffic control uh guy, um but but he 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 specializes in um CAD and making like things in CAD like CAD is a three D program is. oh it's like a it's like a, it's like a program design. that that interior designers use but um you can use it for making things like I don't know transformers. And I'll show you. So, so he and I have been working on this project for quite some time now. And this is this is later on down the road. This is this is after Johnny is done. This is after Ultra Star is done. This is this is what's next on the block. But it, for something at this scale, it, it takes a minute to kind of put it together. But this is a a transformer that he and I worked on together from from the ground up, basically. Um, he, he had a little bit of a skeleton, but you know, his whole backstory and everything, um, like we put all this together ourselves and I've been working on a, a story idea for a while. Um, is there any way to, can I move it over? No, I can't shit. I don't want to show my, my messages to other people, but so this is, that's, that, that's what the jet looks like. And then I'm going to stop sharing this. So you I have a message from KSS. I don't think it's a troll. I think it's for real. He says, I want to see Patrick do gem. <laughs> uh, I'm not against that idea yeah but what's what's funny about gem is back when um because dreamwave actually tried to buy gem gem was actually one of the most expensive ips out there like that's why no one did mm. anything but it's a long time now that this is him in his robot mode he does have a visor that comes over his eye uh but this is a 3d print this guy is small he's only he's he's only about He's only about this size. I have I have a robot right here. He's only he's he, but but we're gonna print him up bigger. This was just an experiment, but uh, this was a story that that I was gonna work on after Ultra Star and Johnny Phantasm, which was gonna be basically my own Transformer story. So there you go, George. Will, will, will that will that entice you? You no. don't like Transformers though. No, I I also don't like things that are colored like that. Like I want just a plain like this. Uh Nothing about this looks appealing to me whatsoever. Really? What about a what about a translucent slime version? No. Glow in no. the dark. <laughs> no, I, I really. 
George, George, John, what is it gonna make? What's it gonna take to make you buy this? I want Johnny Phantasm and Ultra Star, and then the books. Like, well, that's gonna happen for sure. Okay, that's what I want. After that, we'll talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have to work on my pitch a little bit, uh, so that's fine. Yeah. Well, so like the colors, like 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 the way that the story was gonna work out was we were gonna do two colors. Like he was gonna start off that color. And then, because he was a bad guy, and then he was going to turn into a good guy, and he was going to have more of, like, Optimus Prime-type colors. PTB could turn she around. Yeah, you bet I would. Uh, but anyway, yeah, George is always correct. Blake, you've been messaged mm-hmm. by Old Dirty, just so you know, for the info. Um, yes, I think I saw it. Uh, in on Twitter, so yes, I did receive that. <laughs> Snuggy says George is getting grumpy. He needs his early bird special. I am getting hungry, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 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 we're actually headed out here in a minute too. We're gonna go grab some lunch, and then we're actually because we're coming up north, as you know, both mm-hmm. you guys know, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and we and we gotta do some not for me, but T hasn't been up north in a while, so we have to go get some winter clothes for her. Um, tell us, but- um. Tell us, because we're we're all excited about like Ultra Star. I know you have the books. I know you're signing them. I know you have Gemini mailers and bags and boards. Yeah. But everyone knows you're waiting on the cards. What's the status? Uh, the status is they're supposed to start the packaging tomorrow, because 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 they were waiting on a new machine. So I I told them that I have to have them in my hands by the 18th because I'm gonna I'm gonna put a patches together on the 18th, 19th, and 20th. And then I'm leaving on the 21st for a short vacation. And then when I come back, I'll finish. The, like the, they should all be sent out by this year, by the end of this year. So, um, are you going to do any a- fulfillment now between now and then? Like, can you do anything now? Um, yeah. I, so the people that just ordered um, the Japanese version, uh-huh. because if you order the Japanese version, you you just got just the book and none of the extras. Uh-huh. So so we're actually going to start sending some of those out tomorrow. So that's exciting. So you have a couple hundred orders for that, right? Um, I think there's at least a hundred. Okay, wow. The, yeah, yeah. Going to this massive, week. but but yeah. So so if you ordered just the Japanese version, that will be going out uh, tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, and so forth. So yeah, I mean we're like we're going to start fulfillment soon. That's that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, and and when is Sleepy Hollow coming? Uh, Sleepy Hollow will be the the end of February. Like we're going to send that out. I, I I need to make sure that everything is sent out for Ultra Star. And then, um, you know, we have to get things going for Johnny Phantasm, Machine 93. And then once that kind of comes down, then we're going to start sending out uh, Sleepy Hollow. Um, and there will be a second chance for Sleepy Hollow as well for people that missed out because I'm going to I'm going to over order that. So we've got we've got some extra ones. But uh, yeah, so um, things are moving along and I'm excited. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Don't really date. I, I, like again, like um I'm waiting on the trading cards, the packaging for the trading cards. The trading cards are already made. It's the packaging that I'm waiting. I'm, I'm being held up on. Mm-hmm. Um, as soon as I get them in, I told them I have to have them by the 18th. Uh, so if I get those the 18th, uh, you know, a, a big, a big order, a big shipment will be going out the 18th, 19th, and 20th. And then the 21st, I'm going on vacation for a little while. And then when I come back, I'll resume. And then everything should be shipped by the end of the. Uh, um, in the year no so so the japanese cover is just the cover is japanese it's not like i didn't do the inside translated although that is something that i looked into this week I, i'm actually going to be translating johnny phantasm and ultra star into japanese chuckhead's getting married on the 18th who is oh wow chuckhead, Congratulations. chuckhead grayson all right congratulations that's cool you're gonna send them uh, ultra star for a wedding gift yeah i'll, I'll, pay I'll, for? I'll do it overnight <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's exciting times. Um, I, I, I'm excited on just doing more stuff. I'm excited to get these books and I, I'm, I'm excited to see what people think of it. I mean, you've read it, George. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I want, I'm interested in what people think of it. Um, and I'm excited to do more of them. Uh, I mean, I'm already planning on doing the, uh, the second one. Um, I'm going to ask Kenneth if we'll do, if we'll do the cover again. Um, and I'll do, I'll do a cover too. I'll do the same thing. It's like, I'll get someone to do a cover and I'll do a cover. And then the guest person will be the main cover. And then mine will be the, the, uh, the special one. Nice. But, um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to head out and go get some lunch with the wife and do some, uh, close shopping. Uh, thanks for everyone for coming by. Of course, uh, go check out the splintering.com. I got the link down below. Um, go follow Blake. 
George, thanks for being here, of course. Welcome. And chat, of course, thanks for coming to hang out. Um, you know, I've been doing the Sunday show for a while now, for like two years, and I, I think I've only missed a couple Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate everyone that's here. Uh, I know Sundays are kind of slow and people are out with their families. So if you guys are here, I appreciate it. Um, I hope everyone has a good Sunday. Um, I'll see you guys later in the week. I'm going to be doing the fun house on Thursday again. And then the, uh, the baller show is going to be on Shane's channel this week. So I hope everyone has a good Sunday and, uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Later. I've tried fad diets, powders, pills. Still my weight's been up and down like a yo-yo until the AIDS plan taught me how to take off weight and help keep it off. AIDS may taste like a candy, but AIDS contains one of the most effective appetite suppressants you can buy. And there's no stimulant in AIDS that could make you nervous. With AIDS, I ate less, so the weight came off. To help keep it off when I sometimes want things loaded with calories, AIDS helps put me in control. Let the AIDS plan teach you how to take off weight and help keep it off. Try peanut butter AIDS.